Welcome back, everybody, to all things system.text.json or STJ. STJ. Yeah, love it. All right, James. So what I've noticed, and we're both .NET MAUI people, right? Yeah. We come from the mobile world. But in the web world, I've noticed that there's like, things are done a certain way, right? There's like camel casing, like yeah. you read numbers from strings and all that other good stuff, right? But we've been dealing with console apps, right? And we've had to manually specify that. Yes. We've, we've tweaked all the options, really. And I think you're right. In the web world, I wouldn't say there's like a standard, but I would say maybe there's an opinionated, sure. opinionated way of doing it. Yeah. Like so much so that when you create an ASP.NET Core web API, it has a set of defaults for reading and writing cool. JSON. It's yeah. so like when you're, you're serving up, like say the weather, it's going to return that camel case, for example. Yeah. Right? And mm -hmm. it's going to write out um, integers as numbers, but it will kind of allow reading them as strings. Okay. So yeah. the problem here is, like you said, is if you're now creating a back end for your front end, you want your front end to also basically tweak all of those different things so you can accurately read that JSON back. Right. Yeah. You don't want to change your back end for your front end. You'd rather just have your front end adjust for your back end. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Cool. You can do that in System Text JSON in many, many ways. So let's take a look. Mm. So the first thing here is that when you're dealing with this, this is sort of the default ASP.NET Core JSON serializer option. So case insensitive, just reading it. So whatever it is, it's totally fine. Property name policy when it's writing, camel case. And then number handling allow reading from string. So not writing, just reading. Reading, OK. Which means something like this in our weather forecast would be the expected output here. Now, technically, ASP.NET Core would write out 30. Something right? that looks but like that. You might get, and it might want to read something 30 here, and that uh -huh. might be an integer. But we can see here we have all of the different casing that's maybe a little bit different. Now, of course, if I'm creating my own JSON, I would map everything perfect, right? Yeah, but wow. we haven't. Um, so this is what's coming back for me. So if I run this right now, this should just kind of work, because I've specified these options here um, based on what my client's application is going to come in. So we get hot, 30, 10, date. Looks great. Yeah. But Matt, uh -oh. I don't know. That's a lot of lines of code. Yeah, that takes up a lot of space. I don't like it. All right, what if I just did this, which is delete all of this stuff, and then in the constructor, I pass in these JSON serializer defaults. Over here, it's using the general default, but I can use web. Cool. Boom, that's it. So now it'll use the same ASP.NET Core um, serialization and deserialization options. So now when I hit F5, just like this, it should work exactly the same. And sure enough, it works nice. exactly the same. Nice. Now, of course, you can come in, and if you want to, right, you can still add and override different things. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to uh, you know, indent, uh, right indented, right? I could, I could still add yeah. true there, for example. So you can still add more things and tweak and tune sure. as you would like. So totally good to go. Yep. And yeah. down at the class level, on the property level, you could you know, override down there too. Absolutely, right? So that's up to you if you just want to use those defaults instead of going down here and then assigning every single property yeah. name. But it does make it really easy, especially when you're creating a back end, to just use the same defaults on your front end as yeah. well. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Totally cool. Easy peasy. Well, there you have it. All these little nuggets of gold right in System Text JSON for you. We're going to go ahead and link to the documentation below for all the amazing things in STJ. And of course, to all the other videos we put out here on the YouTube. If you like this one, give it a thumbs up. Gently tap that subscribe button if you haven't yet. And aggressively ding that notification <laughs> ding, bell ding, so ding. you get notified every single time we've got a video here right on YouTube. So that's going to do it for this video. So until next time, I'm James. I'm Matt. And thanks for watching.